Hey, everybody, this is Tony Cook, and in the news today, this month, March 2024, is is this the third new tooling model you've rolled out, Mr. Lobach from Tangent Scale Models, this year? Hey, everybody. <laughs> hey, everybody. Yeah. Yes, Tony, it is the third all-new model in the third month of the year. And we also did a fourth release, which was a run of our 4427 high side Pullman covered hoppers as well. So, yes, we are on our third all new release for the year. Uh, we've wow. been really busy, as you can see. Yeah. Wow. Absolutely. What a beautiful car. 60 foot Greenville, double plug door. And here is the first group of those that. As always, it's like, oh, this is great. When do they come out? They're out. They're available now. You can buy them direct from Tangent Scale Models or through their dealers. So, David, tell us a little bit uh, about the car in general. You know, age-wise, it's what, uh, early 60s? Because I see some running boards. That's right. Uh, 1963 to 1966. So, it's a mix of uh, both both sides of the running board era as delivered cars. So, the 63 and 64 cars uh, have running boards on them. The 65 and 66 is do not. Um, and yeah, I mean, there's a lot of different prototype models here that are part of this release. Um, there's a lot of variation amongst the models in this release. So you've got the wide axle spacing on the trucks, uh, you know, wide wheelbase, and you've got the narrow wheelbase. So there's two different wheelbase options. And then um, we've got lots of different options in terms of the ladders and cut off, uh, cut down ladders, original ladders with running board, running board torched off or no running board at all. Um, so there's, we've done a lot of tooling. We've basically tooled it all when it comes to the double plug door cars. Oh, wow. Now this car, as yeah. you say, uh, I think Green Greenville, there's a lot of 60 foot, you know, auto parts box cars and they all have That's a right. general flavor to them but for those like okay how do i spot those i my thing i remember is the greenville has the fish belly instead of a straight sill is that correct yeah i mean there's some of that you, i mean there's there's fish bellies on the acf builds and the pullman builds but um the way that I would look at it this way is it's a, it's a combination of the features it's the double plug doors which are on greenville's and thralls um and then uh you've got the riveted sides which is a greenville thing only the thralls mm. had welded sides um so for the most part so that's kind of the differentiation there that i would be making and then the other one actually is the really narrow inboard uh truck spacing is um you know definitely greenville sign greenville was one of the first ones to originate uh the narrow um the narrow truck option um, which you would see on not on this not on the CP car, but on uh, on on uh, in this release the Wabash car, for example, you'd see it on there. Um, and that's uh, so you say the the wheelbase or the spacing in between it it moves inward. Correct. This is a the wider wheelbase, I believe. That's right. CP? That's right. Yeah, on the CP one, it's the wider wheelbase. So so yeah, there's a mathematical difference there. Uh, the wheelbase is uh, 41 feet, three inches on the uh, CP uh, cars, for instance, or sorry, on the, <laughs> got that wrong, on the Wabash cars, for instance. And then the, the wide wheelbase car is 46 foot three. So there's a five oh. foot difference there in the wheelbase, which is visible. Uh, five feet is visible in HO scale. So. Oh, for sure. Yes. I've seen those modeled yeah. before and it almost looks odd that more narrow, like something seems different about them that, cause again, that's, that's always the, the general thing on a big car like this cushion right. under frame. I see, and all, all that wonderful silky tangent detail. I see the, the coupler cut levers Boy, everything on the end is separate. What's, and I assume the cushioning and did I, or did I see, is there a dozen different brake configurations yes. or something to oh, yeah there's crazy. there's there's a lot of different brake layouts on these cars <laughs> and we've 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 modeled all of them uh there's truck brakes there's body mount brakes there's there's just a lot of different um you know small details there and like as always with the tangent model the small details matter so you know we're we're in the place now where we're pretty much doing everything um down to you know the exact prototype detail for every paint scheme now Wow. Um, it's something that we've really kind of morphed into as we've, as we've, you know, 
as tangent has gone on, you know, we, we haven't done a one size fits all approach anymore. So, um, and that's been a good thing for us both have all that high detail as well as the phase variation stuff. And when you put it together and you pay attention to those small details, it's really neat. You know, it's, it's, it makes these models kind of stand out. You always see something else. That's what I always find is I'm reviewing or looking at samples. And when I pick them out, it's like, oh, look at that. This is a little bit different. And that that's always intriguing. Now, here we go. This is, I believe this is the more narrow wheelbase compared to this. That's the, right. The, On the Conrail yeah. car. Yeah, the Conrail car is a former New York Central build. And uh, the New York Central builds um, were the narrow wheelbase prototype. That's right. So, um yeah, and so I, that's what I, that one is. That Conrail one is, you know, modeled in its in its, um, you know, uh, 1976, you know, large Conrail uh, can opener logo version. So, yep, big fan of this really? one. That photo's neat. That's taken out in California. That prototype photo you just had there, you know, proving that these cars did go to the West Coast. I think that's on. Uh, I think that's on Donner. I don't think that's on the Feather River route. I think that's oh. on the SP. Uh, and yeah, and yeah, sure. it, it, they almost look odd to me because it looks like, well, look at that. The kid took a 60 foot box car and tried to put a 50 foot under frame under, cause look how narrow the wheelbase is on the trucks that they, they well, that's exactly odd. right, Tony. <laughs> that's exactly right. That's exactly how it started. Right. Like ah. the sixties in the 1960s, all of a sudden car types kept getting larger and larger. And, ah. you know, it kind of started in the late fifties, early sixties, like, which is where these cars sit, where. You know, they were starting to experiment with car designs. How much more could they get in there with the new 100 foot, sorry, 100 ton, right. uh, you know, 100 ton capacities? They could suddenly get a lot more volume inside of a car. The thing I like about this car, just what you've got up on the screen, is how the Conrail can opener kind of forms like a, a square underneath it on the right side, and then how all the CODIS data and the and the aci label and all that data kind of fits nicely in that square it's kind of it does cool. yeah okay. i like this and I now like this, this car, car is this car was it built i see the low brake wheel no roof walk this is how it was built right this is not modernized or was it uh this is this is modernized yeah oh, so this okay. is um all the appliances have been lowered by the conrail oh. Uh, by by one of the shops i can't remember if we called out the shop for that but um yeah, uh, actually, this was Conrail Holidaysburg. We did call out the shop. Um, so Conrail Holidaysburg did all that work in in Altoona, Pennsylvania, Holidaysburg, Pennsylvania. So, and I yep. noticed there's several, several different trucks. I love these. This is a what these would have been. They would have been the the friction bearing and originally, and then turned into roller bearing, and now you've just got the open ports where they would have put the greasy rags or whatever it was into there to keep the wheels going. Is that correct? Is this a new newly tooled truck for you? Yeah, that's correct. That That is a newly tooled truck for us. This is a hundred ton truck, just as you described it. Uh, you, you nailed it perfectly. So there's not much more for me to say um, <laughs> other than, yeah, I mean, it's a new truck in our line. And as usual with our line, you know, we're, we're putting new trucks in the line where they fit for our new cars. So, you know, we've got a lot of people talking about, um, about this truck. Um, you know, there are other brands that have, have these trucks as well with the open bearing design. Um, but I don't think anyone's done the hundred ton version yet. So this is a new one, uh, for, for the market generally. And this is a new one for us for sure. So, wow. yep. And then these are the, this would be the front caps for the cars that are the friction style. I assume it was the same general truck side frame. And so depending on yep. the road name, one of these three, would be the the trap door on on the front of those correct that's right we've 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 modeled and and offer those parts uh with the truck so you can attach them if you want them on there or you can keep them off but yeah on our rtr cars we're offering them as they as they appeared on the prototype hmm. so um you know in terms of that conrail car their their open journal design and these are cushion cars. Obviously, I see the cup right. hanging up. Is there different uh, cushioning depending? Or are they all the same? Um, on all these cars, we've got a variation. We've got hydro cushion under frames and we have keystone under frames. So um, you'll you'll see the hydro cushion kind of dis distinct snubber uh, on the bottom of the appropriate cars. And then we've got keystone underframes on the, on the other ones. So yeah, we've got several different versions of the underframes, just like we did in our 86 foot auto parts cars as we've marched through the various versions of those. So, 
Um, you know, we're continuing that goodness of, uh, you know, doing it right, uh, doing different underframe options here, which, you know, again, adds to our complexity of this project. You know, it's not a one one and done prototype. You know, we didn't spend, you know, a certain amount of money. We spent, you know, like 200 to 300 percent of that amount of money to make sure we could do all the different variations. Wow. So it's a lot of upfront expense for Tangent to, to do this kind of, um, you know, very high detail. And, and we're doing it all at once to approach. Um, so we're not leaving it and coming back to it. Generally, we're doing it all up front. So in this release, you'll see all these different variations of the truck centers and the different body types. Every one of the five cars that we've announced here have, you know, some variation from from another. So wow. um, and as and, you know, it gives us and it gives us lots of runway. So down the road, we can do all the other ones as well. So really nice and this this down on shot obviously was was done to show the end but boy i like to point out look at the door track and the plug door there at the top right corner of that image you see all of that stuff of course as you'd expect on a tangent car is separate you know mm -hmm. fine fine silky details all the way around yeah Take well standoff door tracks i think you know for box cars it's hard you know, for a tangent level product, quote unquote, you know, um, it, you, you have to do standoff door tracks. It just doesn't work otherwise. Um, so, you know, we find that that's a detail that, you know, you notice when you look down on it like you just did. Um, you know, there's a lot of people that say, well, I don't notice that when I, you know, the train goes by, you know, from three feet away. And I'm like, I, I totally understand that. But that's not the point. I mean, tangent is making models for the discriminating, discriminating modelers of our hobby. You know, that's who I am. That's who my team of modelers are that work for tangent. And, you know, we, we approach it like we just aren't going to, you know, let little things go generally. So, yeah, we think that's a great detail. Awesome. And I love that. And I noticed all of these, when we showed the, the full, the, the whole group of this first production, boxcar red brown is basically the flavor but you notice as you go through all of these it is not he's not shaking mm -hmm. up just one old bottle of local boxcar red for these yeah cars. no there's that i think this... there's little flavor differences throughout them all and mm -hmm. i think that's really impressive yeah this release i think has three different or four different shades of boxcar red uh brown however you want to describe it um, and in our catalog, uh, we are up to about 15 different shades that we're using on different <laughs> for different reasons for different projects. So it's pretty squirrely. Um, and, you know, but that's that's how the world works these days. You know, we want to get it right. Boy, they look great. Look at that stirrup step, how incredibly thin and fine that looks really impressive. And I noticed the overspray on a handful. We've got the kind of mm -hmm. galvanized or aluminum roof with the overspray from the sides nicely done, which always presents such an authentic look to it. So yeah, that's because in the prototype, the, the guys were up on a step ladder and they would, you know, they'd be spraying the spraying the car and reaching high generally. And, you know, the overspray would float over the top. So that's what we're going for there. Some, some cars more than others have a lot of it. So we try to vary that as well. Um, but uh yeah, there's that's a neat detail that a lot of a lot of people I think dig. So um, and it's fun because when it weathers up, it weathers up really sharply as well. Exactly. So. Yeah. Nice. And I noticed on this one too, this looks like the ladder was trimmed down. Do I see a couple of the torched off posts there to the right of the Erie Lackawanna logo and above the ladder? Isn't it? Aren't these both? Um, no, these were actually delivered that oh, way. Oh, they are um, okay. So they were torched by Greenville before they left the factory. So wow. this Erie Lackawanna is a late, late phase car, which is one of the reasons why we offered it. Um, oh. and it, it it represented another body for us to tool because it doesn't have the pin holes for the ladder to be mounted high like that. So oh. um, you know, this is just yet another one of these phase things that we're doing. Oh. And uh Erie Lackawanna is one of the beneficiaries of that of that phase approach so um huh. and, and not many there's not many late cars like that um so you know but yeah that's that's exactly what you're seeing it's been torched off by greenville and these are produced what 63 to 66 was greenville's production on these and about that's how right. many total do you know between all the railroads they built um many? yeah i do have that number uh that number happens to be on just the young on just these uh, Youngstown double doors, the total is 808 cars. So, hmm. yep. Nice group. Now, two Milwaukee's. I can see a little difference there above the Milwaukee reporting mark, the three digit yeah. 202 and the 168. And I remember seeing that on something before. 
fill us in what's because i'm i'm looking trying to spot differences i know beyond those numbers there what's the deal on the the milwaukee releases yeah well i mean the milwaukee release is neat because um in 1973 uh u.s railway equipment which was a a, a car car builder slash refurbisher of rail cars in washington indiana um, took the GBW group of cars that were delivered to G GBW by Greenville, and um, they took them and retrofitted them for Milwaukee Road. Uh, so these 63 cars probably had a 10-year lease because it's 73 when they got the rebuild. So mm -hmm. they probably had a 10-year lease from Green Bay and Western. Green Bay and Western didn't renew the lease, and then Milwaukee, and then somehow, um, you know. United States Railway Equipment got them or Milwaukee got them and sent them to USRE. Either way, USRE did the work in Washington, Indiana, and they uh, they did a, they did some upgrade work to them, I think internally more than anything else, and then obviously externally with a new paint job. And then they were assigned uh, by Milwaukee uh, to two different uh, return route locations. Mm -hmm. One of them is a return to Pennsylvania Railroad at Madisonville, Ohio. Um, and that was funny, we thought, because the reference was to return to PRR in 1973, which, of course, yeah. postdates the PRR yeah. uh, entirely. So that was kind of a fun thing. And then um, the other group, uh, SKUs four through six, which is our later, um, the later number um, ha numbers, have a return to Essex Terminal, Windsor, Ontario. So those are Canadian assigned cars. Oh, okay. um, you know, so so keep in mind, you know, these are pooled cars, just like all these cars are pooled. So even if you model Milwaukee Road, you know, you don't need the Milwaukee Road car per se. You need, you know, whatever's in the pool. Uh, same goes for any other railroad. So, you know, it's all about modeling the pool of cars. They're shared amongst the owners of the pool. So a lot of modelers, you know, I don't think really get that and don't care. Um, and the other ones really do want to try and replicate that. So they try to figure out like which ones would go together. Um, and then there's a third option where you just kind of shop based on what you like or what kind of is more of a modern paint scheme, you know, so hmm. it goes all ways. There's all different ways to uh, collect them all. So, boy, wow, beautiful. You know, I'm a Wabash fan, so I was really <laughs> excited to see this car. That yeah, is, I knew you'd yeah. like this one. Oh, you know? yeah. Wow. Yeah, I mean, the Wabash one is pretty neat. It goes back to that early build again. So, you know, this is the the narrow the narrow wheelbase car is pretty distinct. You can see it there. It kind of sticks out like a sore thumb. You know, it's got the follow the flag, uh, you know, uh, you know, paint scheme on it. So that, that, that of course is really neat. And, uh, you know, it's got the beautiful, uh, the apex running board on the top and uh hydro cushion set up. So it's got, you know, the snubber with the truck mounted brake details underneath it. It's got the hundred ton, our new hundred ton, uh, Barber S2 truck, um, Sorry, that's got rotating uh, caps on it. So I guess it, which truck does it have on it? Yes, it's got the roller bearings on it. Sorry, uh, it's got the other truck on it. So keep in mind, you know, we we've got an arsenal of trucks now to uh, to choose from when we do these models. So we uh, can can mix and match different trucks in our line. So every paint scheme has the correct truck on it now. Um, oh, this nice. was something we something we couldn't do, you know, maybe six seven years ago. But you know, that's been a slow build for slow build for tangent and with each of like i said with each of these releases um you know we're doing more trucks that are necessary now this i love it when you do all the undex and share this with us because then we get a little insight because you always say hey will they make this hey will they make that is always no matter what you announce there's always you know somebody's road name that didn't make it the first run so i noticed are there five different of these the kit versions that are available and they cover such a range i don't want to put you on the spot here but can you off the top of your head throw some names against these different versions of well this could be a whatever in the future yeah um i mean our, our website documents this well for anyone who wants to go back and dig in but yes we have five on deck kits that cover you know the various production phases of the cars um and and just to be clear just to back up one step there were 14 um, original uh, owners for these cars. Nice. So, you know, there's a, there's a lot of, there's a lot of release potential coming from Tangent down the road. Um, but, you know, in the meantime, these undeck kits certainly will satisfy the people that want to like do something up for their favorite railroad or do a modified car or whatever, or, or a home road type scenario. But yeah, the phase one kit um, or the first kit has 
you know, N&W Mopac Wabash version. That's like the earliest version of the car, 63, 64, with the narrow truck centers, high, high brake wheel, high ladders, all that stuff. The second kit has got, um, let's see, has got uh, D uh, Detroit and Toledo Shoreline, Erie Lackawanna, um, MKT, believe it or not, uh, hmm. Mopac, which you'll be happy to hear, and Nickel Plate. Oh, so nice. these, are, you know, there's a lot of row names that haven't been released, you know, in this run. And then the the third kit has DT and I, oh. uh, Erie Lackawanna. There's several different Erie Lackawanna options. That's one of them. Uh, GBW, uh, Norfolk and Western, and New York Central. And of course, these are the original owners for these, not the repaints. And then um, the fourth kit has got CP, DT, and I again, different version of DT, and I, um, Grand Trunk, Western, and Frisco. Believe it or not, oh. Frisco had these. Uh, Grand Trunks are cool too, by the way, because Grand Trunks uh, made it to this modern day CN. And then, oh. um, and then, yeah, and then there's the late, late cars, which are the Erie Lackawanna, like we did in this release. And then also Louisville and Nashville. So, yeah, there's a lot of meat on the bone there for anyone who wants to dive in on kits. Um, really and, awesome. And now the kits yeah. are available. I, I've gotten those before because it's just fun to see. Those usually come if you've not bought one of the tangent kits and you're not a kit builder. And I'll raise my hand. Yes, I have a bunch of tangent kits on the shelf. And no, I yeah would not even begin because not my thing. But it's fun to have them yep. to see all the pieces and how it goes together. And pricing on those, that's the other thing too. Okay, we've not talked pricing yet. This is fully assembled, ready to run. Everybody yes. you know, always is talking yeah. about prices. I first see these. I would not looked at the price yet. This was my guess. $64.95, $69.95. Yeah. Was well, I you're wrong? Being, how are you? Being, how are you? What is the, <laughs> tell us the shock is here with, I look at it again like, wait a minute. 53 yeah, they're 58.95. Um, and if you like, you know, if you Google like the old Concord cars, I think they're like 20 bucks. So <laughs> you're getting a pretty good deal for 58.95 when you count that the other, you know, version of an old model has like six parts in the box and ours has a hundred. So on a part per part basis, you're getting a lot of value there. And it's also assembled, by the way, with real Katie couplers, by the way, and awesome trucks uh, with wheels that roll, et cetera. So, um, you know, we've got it all together in a ready to run form at 58.95. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, we're trying to, you know, we're trying to be aggressive with price yet also, you know, provide a bit of a value for people that, that recognize what they're getting for their dollar in terms of the fidelity to the prototype, which again is what we come back to. The tangent models out of the box are better than anything else on the market. Fidelity to prototype, fully weighted and ready to run. Um, you know, we just make sure that they're ready to go with real KDs and they're fully weighted, which is not something I take lightly as the owner of this business. Um, you know, we don't cheat it by half an ounce or we don't cheat it by several ounces. Even our coal hoppers are, are NMRA weight. Uh, so, you know, that's kind of how we've approached this business. So, yep, adherence to the prototype, making a good model is what we do. I'm going to have to get a laugh track together now because you said that you don't take weighting the cars lightly. So that needs to have that can sitcom of, laugh. A dad I'll, joke there, yeah. I'll see. I'll see if I can find that. These look great. Uh, now I know that there's more colorful schemes in the future for some of the other road names that we talked about. These, of course, limited run. Yeah. Multiple road names or road numbers. I'm sorry. Available on all of these. They're available now. Tangent scale models is the place to go. David, mm -hmm. I'm just, I'm so impressed. And yes, you mentioned that. I, it's the first thing I did when I saw these announced, like, do I have the Robbins Rails or the Concord edition of that car? Because yes, there was back in the 80s, one of those cars. And there's no similar a similarity between them. I went and looked and pulled that one off the shelf. And it's like, yeah, yeah that's a Greenville 60 foot car, but not like this. That that's amazing. I'm not going to disparage incredible. that model because that model at its time was oh, was pretty time, good. Yes, yeah, um, yeah. But you know, in today's world, it doesn't really stand up, and it certainly doesn't have the detail variations. It's all it's a one and run. It was one, one and, and done, done kind yeah. of approach. Oh. So um, just very different looking. Um, I also wanted to add, you know, you can buy Tangent not only from our website, but also from us, uh, you know, a bunch of hobby shops that carry Tangent. So um, it would, I would be remiss not to uh, to mention that our, our product has been and always has been available in hobby shops. 
and I that uh, in fact you brought out an Illinois Central Gulf Hopper car with that cool grain lid thing, and then mm -hmm. I oh I don't have any left. They all sold out. <laughs> But I'm sorry, my, my I did not do a good at, job of taking care of you. <laughs> my friends at Spring Creek helped me out. So Spring Creek in Nebraska, I also buy from Lombard Hobbies in Chicago. Jeff and Andrew carry Tangent uh, mm -hmm. locally when I'm in Kansas City, Midwest Model Midwest. Railroad, I believe I says your stuff. So, yes, I yeah. have lots of options for when David snubs me and says, Tycho Man, no ICG hoppers for you. And it's like, oh, he's like the soup Nazi with me. He is. It's That's like, because you oh. like Tycho. I mean, come on. I, well, are you going to do this in the UP and the Sioux line like that Tycho 62 foot car? Because that would look I'm nice. Sorry, I, that's no. that's it's what I need. The, ever I need going to happen. I need to buy that's the why we offer a kit, Tony. That's okay. why we offer the kit. That's you're throwing down the gauntlet. That's my challenge. I have to buy two kits to paint and do a Sioux line and a UP with the automated railway map to match my old Tycos. Okay. All that's right. So right. on my list, it's on my list, David, thank you so much for your time today. And thank you as always for letting me harass you. Uh, I've known David for years. So anybody thinks, man, he's been mean to the tangent guy. No, I know the tangent guy. I, oh, yeah. I, I, I mean, I, right back. So I, and I, he is. I yes. I get, dishes it right back. Yes. So yeah. awesome. Yeah. I'm so excited. 2024. You're just knocking them out of the, out of the gate here. This box car is a winner. It's available now. Uh, 5895 get out there and get some cause they sell out quick. And I know we'll be back to visit with you again. Cause I know you got some more exciting projects coming. Can you give us uh, to let folks know, will you be at the St. Louis RPM in July? Tangent will be there for sure. Yes. Okay. Awesome. So looking forward to that. That's in the middle of July, St. Louis RPM. I'll be there. I'll, you know, everybody who's anybody goes to the RPM in St. Louis. It is the RPM. So tangentscalemodels.com is a place to go for this and take a look at all their other wonderful stuff. David, thank you so much for your time. The 60 foot Greenville double door auto parts box car is in the news today.